Boom! Hi, my name is Warren, and I'm just a kid like you. Or I was until I found Evil Gargle's magic jewel. Then he tricked me, and I read a spell. Now every time I sneeze, monster by mistake. My sister Tracy tries a spell book. She never gets it right, but Tracy doesn't ever give up. Cause you know one day she might find the words that will return me to my former wit and height. I'm a monster by mistake. What? What? Can you keep a secret? Maybe. What is it? Come here. Look. Wow. See? Isn't that neat? What is it? I don't know, but I found it first, so it's mine. What's that up there? Is that cheese? Could be. It sure looks like something to eat, doesn't it? Hmm. I wonder how this works. Hey, hey, don't touch it if you don't know what it is. Why? What's wrong? Well, I'm not sure. I just think that if we don't really know what it is, we shouldn't touch it. It might hurt us. Well, then what should we do? I know that some things are okay, and some things are not. And I think if we don't know, we should ask. Ask who? Somebody who knows about stuff like this. Oh, you mean like Mom or Uncle Fred? Yeah, or somebody else we trust. We don't have to be afraid, but we do have to be careful. Hmm. Just because somebody leaves something lying around doesn't mean it's okay for us to play with. Well, I found it, so I get to tell first. Hey, wait for me. <laughs> Reach your home. <laughs> A message from Concerned Children's Advertisers. Cool shape, great honey taste. Post Honeycomb cereal, get what you want. Road Champs BXS. All die cast metal like Real Schwinn, Paro, and GT. The trick stick makes it sick. Dude, this thing rips. Same tricks, same moves, just like the pros. Road Champs BXS. Ride dirt. Oh, this is killer. Ride vert. Dude, that is sick. Ride street. Oh, yeah. Have the best bikes, the best riders. Road Champs BXS half bike available at a store near you. Road Champs BXS. Dragon, dragon, one dragon, dragon ball C. Action figures, Powerball Deluxe figures, and mini action sets are each sold separately from Irwin. When you eat right, practice hard, and do your best. There's no telling how far you could go. Now you can be drafted by Tony's Team Tiger and appear on your own cereal box, sports card, or in our next ad. Details on specially marked packs. Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. They're great! <laughs> Two, three, four... How much have you got? Five, six... Seven dollars. How about you, Tracy? Eight dollars and twenty-six cents. That won't even buy us the packaging. <laughs> huh? Sorry, Johnny. I didn't know you were there. That's okay, kid. I was just catching up in some shut-eye. What are you guys doing, anyway? We're pooling our money to buy a new CD-ROM. Mysteries of the Ancient World. It has an interactive treasure hunt and Mongol invaders and lost civilizations. Sounds pretty exciting. Well, it doesn't matter. We don't have enough money to buy it. Cash flow problems, huh? What you kids need is a gig. A what? A gig. A way to earn some moolah. 
like me and the band used to do. But we're not a band. You know a few magic tricks, don't you? Sure. You could put on a show, hire yourself out to entertain at birthday parties. How does this sound? Tracy's Magnificent Magic Show. I could use the Book of Spells and the Jewel. Well, I was thinking of traditional magic, but... That's a great idea! Tracy's Magnificent Magic Show! Oh, well, what about me, Johnny? What could I do? You could be my assistant and wear this! <laughs> no, wait! I have a better idea! What? It's perfect! Tracy's Magnificent Magic and Monster Show! That's the ticket! Looking good! Warren! What is it? This is my last poster, but I need another tack. Here. <sighs> oh no, ragweed! I'm allergic! <laughs> well, we're finished anyway. Come on! Ah, hello. I trust you are the ones who put up this poster. Yes, that's right. Uh, I'm Tracy, and this is my, uh, the, um... Hmm. Yes. Very lifelike costume. Very lifelike indeed. Thank you. I applaud your initiative. I wish to take advantage of your services. My name is Mrs. Stein. My address is there on the card. Please arrive tomorrow morning at 11 sharp. Uh, Mrs. Stein, wait! Yes? What exactly will we be doing? Entertaining Orville, my son. I'm sure he'll be delighted with you. Good day. Do you believe it? We got ourselves a gig, Tracy! All right! Thanks, Mom. See you in a couple of hours. I wonder how many kids will be at Orville's birthday party. The more, the better, Warren. Our magic show deserves a huge audience. Hot diggity. Very posh. Shh. Someone's coming. Ah, welcome. I applaud punctuality. Now, where is the monster? Surely he's part of the show. Don't worry, Mrs. Stein. He'll be here. Oh, very good, then. Do come in. No, no, no fingerprints on the wall, please. Sorry. Quite the lady, isn't she? Shh. Excuse me. I said, uh, shh. Should we meet Orville, maybe? Yes, that would be most sensible. Orville is on the back porch. Follow me, please. Don't touch any surfaces, children. I've just applied bleach. Orville, these young people have come to entertain you. But I want you to play with me. We have discussed this already. I am busy today. You're always busy. The life of the mind is a rich and demanding one, you know that. Now? Say hello to our guests. Hello. Orville has finished his philosophy flashcards and is ready to experience some fun. Fun is a relative term. An excellent point, Orville. But where are the other kids? Isn't this uh, Orville's birthday party? Oh, whatever gave you that idea. No, no, no. You've been hired to entertain Orville while I prepare for a meeting of my discussion group. Our topic today is scientific exploration of the paranormal. <laughs> oh, it's quite ridiculous, really, the things people believe in. Ghosts and such. I am to host the discussion, so I must be free to multitask, starting precisely... Oh, uh, now. I am king of the universe. I am king of the universe. Orville, I must insist that you lower the volume on your toy while your friends are here. He is very attached to that plastic figurine. Well, now I must be off. I'll be in the kitchen preparing some light refreshments for my group. Uh -oh. Hi, Orville. I'm Warren, and my sister's name is Tracy. So? Well, you're going to have a good time with us today. I doubt it. Ahem! <clears throat> Ladies and jelly beans, introducing Tracy's magnificent magic and monster 
Monster Show! And now, before your very eyes, I'm going to make these balls vanish into thin air! Plato might question whether they were ever there in the first place. Oh, they're here, all right. And now, abracadabra! They're gone! You put them up your sleeve. It's quite obvious. You little... Well, never mind. Watch this, Orville. Ixtem fluveus, levitus figus mod. <laughs> How's that for magic? You did it with wires. Anyone could see that. What are you talking about? There aren't any wires. It was magic. Believe me, I use the book of... Never mind. Forget the tricks. The best part of the show is yet to come. I can hardly wait. Good. Because we'll be right back. Hey! Hey! Sorry, but Orville's really getting to me. It would be easier to make a block of wood laugh. Laugh? We can't even get him to smile. Poor Orville. Imagine having a mother that doesn't believe in ghosts. Well, we can't give up so fast. We've got to earn our money. How? We're not exactly entertaining him. Well, the monster's got to impress him. That's one tough audience, kid. Good luck. Thanks, Johnny. Wait, let me introduce you. Ta-da! What now? It's time for the best, the most exciting, the most scintillating part of the show. Introducing the one and only Pickford Monster! Monster, some magic show. That little. Ugh! So he wants magic, does he? I'll give him magic. Tracy, wait! Let's see what Orville thinks when his precious toy flies. Maybe that'll impress him. Extem Nimoy. What are you doing? Ethereal's Focarum Flex. No! What's happening to Orville's toy? I don't know. Tracy! I am king of the universe. I am king of the universe. Uh, hi there. You are an intruder. Surrender or be destroyed. Wow! Now that's a good trick. All I wanted to do was make him fly. Are you nuts? You know how unpredictable that jewel is. Well, I'm sorry, but if Warren hadn't bumped into it, that thing might still be a toy. It was an accident. Okay, kids, no scrapping. We have to fix this. Ah, I see the monster has arrived. Uh, and where's Orville? Orville? Orville. Um, he went out to play with his action toy because it's a, um, <clears throat> intermission. Ah, very sensible. Young legs need stretching just as young minds do. Is uh, Orville enjoying himself? Well, he was a little skeptical at first, but he's uh, loosening up. Excellent. I applaud perseverance. What's this? It must have fallen off the chandelier in the living room. Although how it got out here is certainly food for conjecture. Mrs. Stein, wait! There's the phone. Excuse me, children. Hello, Virginia. Oh, everything's just fine. She took the jewel. She took the jewel. I can't reverse the spell now. Let's go get it back then. What about Orville? He's alone out there with that thing. 
Leave Mrs. Stein to me. I'll get the jewel back while you two keep tabs on Mr. King of the Universe. Come on, Tracy. You are an intruder. Surrender or be destroyed. Sorry, I, uh, got distracted. You dare to disobey. Depart! Hey, you could be king. Honest. But the thing is... The thing is, you have an attitude problem. Who is this underling? Underling? She's my sister. Surrender or be destroyed. Try and make us. Tracy! Ouch! Yes! Yes! Oh, ow! <laughs> Good one! What's that? Hey, look out! Uh, ooh. Oh! Ooh, oh! Ooh, oh! Hey, one of those things coming out of my... Oh! Oh, these beams. Oh, hey, I'm not King Kong! I told you! I'm Optimus! Oh, oh, I gotta hide. Oh, oh, where are those things? Ah! Oh, oh, these beams gotta be strong. Oh! Oh, oh, hey! Oh, no! Here they come again! What is going on? I'm in a time warp! Get me out of here! Oh, 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 no! These beams gonna fall! Oh! Beast Machines, Thursdays at 8. <laughs> Live from Cybertron, it's the World of Robots competition, and here comes Team Beasties. Looks like they're off to a good start. Nice leap over the first hurdle. A backward tumble. Ooh, looks like someone's down. It's just a stretch. But what's this? A free fall drop, and here comes the finish. A perfect landing. Beasties! Saturdays at 7 in Vortex. That is my point, Virginia. The scientific data, when scrutinized properly, fails to display any proof whatsoever of the existence of ghosts. Huh. Anybody who does believe in ghosts is simply being irrational. I, I have to go now, Virginia. I'll, I'll see you later. Hmm. A weather disturbance? Well, that might cause spontaneous channel switching. Rather early in the day for a rumba. However... Now, my, 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 ah, oh, oh, oh. Marvel, stop it, stop! This planet is under my command. Oh, yeah? Take that! <laughs> that was excellent, Tracy. You will pay for your insolence. There must be a draft in here. Cha, cha, cha. No, to stop that. Now get a hold of yourself. Cha, cha, cha. Cha, cha, cha. Ooh, cha, cha, cha. Hmm, this might be harder than I thought. Put me down, you oversized googa! I have the underling, and I will turn her into calm. It's a pre-programmed phrase. Your voice sounds really familiar. Come on. We have to rescue Tracy. He won't hurt her, Willie. Not really. Not if we can stop him. Oh, no. I do declare. <gasps> An aerodynamic anomaly, perhaps? Oh! Missed again. I I didn't see that. No, no, I 
certainly did not. Help! Get me out of here! Let her go! I mean it! The underling must be destroyed. But we're just playing, aren't we? And she's nice. Thanks, Orville. Hey! Uh, 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 uh. Obey or perish. Take me down, you pea brain. Ah! Hang on, Tracy. Is that some kind of joke? Tracy. It's the thought that counts. You cannot escape my wrath. What does wrath mean? Uh, well, um, uh, acerbity, ire, acrimony. More specifically? He's really mad. <laughs> Pick on someone your own thighs. <laughs> Achoo! <laughs> Cleanup, yes. Uh, cleanup is definitely in order. Uh, oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. My word! This defies logic. I mean, it isn't happening. It is not at all. But don't mind if I do. <laughs> <laughs> Caramba! What? Oh! Where did the monster go? He had to, uh, uh leave! Huh? Come on, you guys! I'd better get moving. What? No! Ah! Ah! A ghost! Forecast plenty of sunshine for today with seasonal temperatures. We should reach our normal high of about 82 degrees. your brother gone, Tracy? He's just admiring your garden. He really likes dandelions. 
Well, you both deserve a big tip. You obviously put on a marvelous show. Thanks, Mrs. Stein. Yeah, thanks a lot. You're very welcome. And as for you, Orville, I've canceled my discussion group meeting, so we can do whatever you wish now. Really? Si, senor. Oh. <laughs> I mean, yes, absolutely. My new philosophy, one I wish to examine more fully now, is how to have fun. Fun! Fun! Fun, 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 fun. <laughs> Oh, well, so, uh, let's go have some. Okay, Mom. My action figure came alive. Well, I met a very attractive entity. Mm -hmm. Johnny, what did you do to Mrs. Stein? Let's just say she found me pretty haunting. Huh? Never mind. We all worked hard today. You can say that again. There's Mom. Maybe she'll take us to look at CD-ROMs. I am king of the universe. I am king of the universe. <gasps> I am king of the universe. Honeycomb cereal. You can collect one of seven Wayne Gretzky boxes and inside an upper deck Gretzky card so you can get your hockey moments because this is one game you never grow out of. Are you looking for some entertainment? Well, tune into the wackiest family. Join Gomez, Morticia, Fester, and all the gang. Don't forget the very hairy relative, Cousin It. On the Adams family, the kookiest family this side of. Uh, hey! This is the radio promo, Dumbbell! You're on TV. TV, you know, pictures? Come on, I need a picture. Sound, sound, I need sound. The new Adams Family, tonight at 6. My TV. Closed captioning on YTV brought to you in part by DreamWorks Pictures. The road to El Dorado. They came for the gold, they stayed for the adventure. Coming to theaters everywhere March 31st. <laughs> The name's Larry, oh. and uh, you are? Harley T. Wiggins. Well, tell me, Mr. Wiggins, uh, what would you like to do with the money if you win a million? Buy a motorcycle. I've always wanted a motorcycle. That's it? Just a motorcycle? Well, and a helmet gotta protect this brain of mine. Oh, uh, hold on. No, 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 don't worry. No, 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 we ain't giving away no million. <laughs> yeah. Well, sure I like my job. No. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, okay. No problem. Oh, boy. Uh. This story 
is totally true It happened to my friend named Sue She'd had rough times way back, that sure is true She'd been napped as a thief in fourth grade sold by peppermint sweets But then had gone straight, just couldn't wait the very next day The men in blue had scared her, but good, ain't that the truth? Years later, she was really rich To an oil baron she had just been hitched She drove a car so huge a moose could fit She went downtown to shop at a boutique oh. Very hot, just to wander and browse And try on a blouse and pass the time of day She left the store without buying a thing
It's Heroic Charger versus the Evil Collector and the ultimate fight to the finish line. More than racing, it's a rumble. NASCAR racers, you've got the drive to survive against an army of racing warriors. Battle to the front of the pack in your extreme stunt machine. Deploy Charger and hurdle into the lead. Shift into fly mode and leave the road behind. Or are you out to collect more than victory, like other cars one piece at a time? Not this time! More than racing, it's a rumble. NASCAR racers. Racers come with driver, each sold separately. It's Adventures on Planet Snack. Jenny, look, Captain Baker and his friends crash landed on Planet Snack. Captain Baker is pointing towards... An observatory. Steve's going in. I, I wonder, wonder what, what we can find. Win an interplanetary tour of your choice to an observatory in California or Spain or Australia. Pick up a ballot from a Planet Snack display in a store near you. Or enter online at ytv.com plus watch the zone to win more space junk. I want to go find adventure. Hey, wait a minute. The first question on your way to a million. <clears throat> For one dollar, <throat> why is the French prison called the Bastille? Because it is made of the Bastille in France. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> uh, You're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, uh, that was exciting. We'd better take a breather here and watch the breathtaking, freaky story. This is a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine. This girl, Shelly, she was the worst chicken you ever saw. Horror movies made her scream every time. So anyway, Shelly's nightmare started in the cafe, the day her friend Jennifer wanted to go out on a date. She asked Shelly if she'd sub in for her for babysitting. Jennifer was supposed to sit at the Thompson place that night, way out in the country, way up on that hill. The Thompson Place was a scary old mansion. Ooh, Shelly got the shakes just thinking about it. It reminded her of those movies where a bunch of teenagers go into a spooky old house and never come out. But Jennifer wasn't above shaming the girl into taking her place. Oh, what's the matter, Shelly? Scared? I guess the taunt just got under Shelly's skin. A strange look got into her eyes, like determination or something. Very, very bad timing, I'd say. Very bad. So at 9 o'clock sharp, Shelly knocked on the Thompson's door. Everything went as usual. Parents were gone. Check. Kids were in bed. Check. Fridge was raided. check a -rooney. And she settled in for a little TV to pass the time. And then the phone rang. Well, Shelly figured it would be Jennifer. But when she lifted the receiver, this gross, mumbling voice said, Have you checked the children? She tried to scream, but it got clogged up in her throat, so she slammed the phone down. She was paralyzed with fear, till, the, till a thought crept into her head. Well, what if Jennifer set this up to scare her? What if it was some kind of practical joke? Shelly was almost calmed down when the phone rang again. This time, she fell off the couch, and she tried hiding under the coffee table. She just wouldn't answer. She just let it ring, right? And what if it was Jennifer calling back to say how funny the whole thing was? Oh, Shelly couldn't stand the ringing and, and lunged for the phone. Hello? Same creepy voice. Same creepy tone. Have you checked the children? No frozen fear this time. Uh-uh. Total panic. She ripped the phone right out of the socket and threw it across the room. Shelly raced around the downstairs, shutting every blind, locking every door, and pushing the big furniture up against the outside doors. Then, there was nothing for her to do but wait. Alone, in that big old house with that stupid clock just ticking and ticking and ticking. You could hear it all the way from upstairs. Upstairs. Then the thought hit her. Maybe she should check on the kids. After all, it's only a stupid joke, right? Jennifer was probably having the biggest laugh of her life. At least that's, that's what Shelly hoped. She headed for the foot of the stairs. There's nothing to be scared of, right? Even though the stairs were awfully dark and creepy. But just as her foot hit the bottom step... It was coming from the study this time. Shelly tore into the spooky old room. It had stuffed bear heads on the walls. She whipped the phone right off the hook. It was the voice. You haven't checked the children! You haven't checked the children! 
I'll drown! Shelly was frozen with fear. The thought suddenly calmed her down. Well, she could phone the operator and get them to trace the call and scare the heck out of Jennifer. Or arrest her or something. So she called the operator. But they said that she had to wait for the creepy guy to call back before they could trace the call. And just as soon as she hung up, the phone started to ring again. Shelly snapped up the receiver and held it to her ear, waiting for the creepy voice, but no one was there. She breathed a sigh of relief. <gasps> Wrong number. But just as she hung up the phone, it rang again. Stop calling me, she screamed. I know it's you, Jennifer. This isn't very funny. But it was the operator. Get out, she screamed. Why, asked Shelly. We've traced the call, said the operator. It's coming from a second line inside the house. Get out now. This is a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine who got real brave and now babysits anyone, anywhere, in any house. As long as there isn't more than one phone line. He only answered one question. You got my word. He ain't going to win no million dollars. What do you mean it's going to come out of my pocket? I ain't got... Hello? Hello? <gasps> Uh, um, we'll be back after this terrific, freaky story. Uh, uh, oh, boy. This is a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine. An old friend, Arnold, who I met one summer at camp. Where Arnold considered himself a pretty special kid on account that there was nothing he wouldn't do. Jump off the highest dock, curse splash, swallow a snail, yum, why he even ate the chef's mystery special. Arnold thought all these things made him Mr. Big Shot, but truth be told, most people thought he was a, well, lunkhead. Well, one day during a hike in the woods, Arnold got himself a notion. Bet you I can climb that there tree, he said. But that tree was a 60-foot redwood, the tallest tree in the forest. And no sooner than you could say lunkhead, Arnold was off, scrambling up the tree like some kind of monkey. Now, I guess the lack of brains made it easy for him. He kept going higher and higher until we couldn't see him anymore. Then our counselors showed up. They told us to get going. We had to make it back to camp before nightfall. And, of course, they wouldn't listen to our screaming about Arnold. By now, Arnold was so high up he couldn't hear anyone. And when he climbed back down, we had already packed up and left. Well, I better go find those guys, said Arnold. It'd be a shame if they started missing me. So, off Arnold went. It was getting dark by the time we got back, and suddenly the counselors realized that Arnold was missing. They started to get real worried because no one should be out in the forest at night. There were stories told about strange things happening out there in the woods. The same stories that were going around in Arnold's head, making him even more lost. He'd found that very same redwood tree five times now. Suddenly, a twig cracked. Something was in the bushes and coming closer. Maybe the campfire stories were true. Arnold struck a karate pose, ready to defend himself against hideous forest creatures when three very old grannies stepped out of the mist. Something the matter, dearie? One of them said. They told Arnold how they'd been out collecting mushrooms when they spotted him. Arnold explained how he'd been deserted by his counselors, and the grannies kindly offered to put him up for the night in their cottage. The old grannies lived in the middle of the deepest and darkest part of the forest. They said it was very private and close to all the very best mushroom patches. Inside, from floor to ceiling, were shelves and shelves of jars filled with every kind of fungus and plant you could imagine. The grannies explained they were all herbs and spices which they used to add a bit of the unusual to their meals. You must really enjoy cooking, said Arnold. Would you like a meal, young man? You must be starving, said one. You look cold, said another. We have just a thing to warm you up, said the third. In the next room, the grannies proudly showed Arnold the largest hot tub he had ever seen. It was homemade, they said. Great for soaking their bunions after long walks in the woods. So there sat Arnold, soaking away in the bubbling water, trying not to think about the old granny's bunions. <laughs> they sure were nice ladies, even if they were a tad strange. He could hear them talking in the kitchen about what a nice young man and how long it had been since they'd had anyone for dinner. The grannies sounded very excited, cackling away as they sharpened their knives. 
Something about that place reminded Arnold about those old campfire stories. Wasn't there one about a boy lost in the forest and witches who liked eating? Nah, couldn't be. These were grannies, not witches. Grannies with scary black cats and bottles of funguses and... The door opened and Arnold jumped. A granny said she needed her broom to sweep up before dinner. We're almost ready for you, she croaked. No reason to worry, Arnold told himself. Just spooky old grannies with black cats, brooms, and this big giant pot he was sitting in. They weren't warming him up, they were cooking him. He had to get out of here before tonight's meal was poached. Arnold! Then the doorknob rattled. He was trapped. Arnold looked around and saw his chance. He opened a jar of spice and threw it in the air. The granny started to sneeze. He leaped from the pot, threw a window, and away through the forest as fast as he could go. The sweet old granny stood there holding a freshly baked dish of maple walnut meatloaf with parsley parsnips. What was wrong with that boy? Didn't he like meatloaf? Maybe he's a vegetarian. This is a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine, Arnold, who we found the next morning shivering under the redwood. He doesn't go on hikes anymore, and whenever he sees old ladies, he screams and hides way up in a tree. While you were gone, Mr. Wiggins here answered 999,999 questions. Only one more to go to win a million. Okay, the question is, why does a stork stand on one leg? Well, if he lifts both legs, he'll fall down. <laughs> You're right! This is a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine. Hunter, he was a detective, a Seamus, a sleuth. He was the best of the best. He sniffed out the clues that no one else could see. Solved the cases that everyone else said were unsolvable. He was the stuff that legends were made of. Hunter had been working the six-finger case. Seems some six-fingered second-story operator had a prodigious penchant for pendants of the diamond-studded variety. Hunter had been combing the crime scenes for clues, but the crook always got away clean. Then nothing, nada, the big nowheresville. It was like old six-finger had disappeared without a trace, vanished off the face of the earth leaving Hunter in the lurch. This was the one that got away and it was slowly driving him mad. He was morose, his work was slipping. He was fixated on finding the six-fingered thief. Finally, the chief of detectives called him on it. Hunter, he said, you're a good man, but the six-finger fixation isn't good for you or the force. Then he ordered Hunter two weeks off, his first vacation in six years. Hunter packed up the missus and plotted off for two weeks of quiet. Nothing but rest, nothing but relaxation in sunny Las Vegas. They made the most of their time together, quality time. They took in the local culture, the nightlife, the shows, the $2 early bird steak dinners. One night they were touring the famous neon strip. That's when the missus spotted the fabulous El Rancho Mirage Wax Museum. Propped up outside were likenesses of Lee, Wayne, Frankie, Dino, and Sammy standing there big as life and twice as fragrant. Come on, honey, let's go in, she urged. It'll be fun. Hunter wasn't convinced, but she smiled at him as the neon twinkled in the ice she wore around her neck. Hunter figured, why not? We're on vacation. They stepped through the turnstiles into the cool, dark lobby. They toured the Hall of Fame, the Walk of Presidents, and the Dungeon of Horror. Finally, they came to the gallery of heroes and villains. There were the lawbreakers and the lawmen who brought them to justice. Hunter looked them up and down. He'd known these mugs in the flesh, and when he'd caught them, they melted faster than these wax dummies. Then they came to the mass stalkers, the drooler, Johnny Running Nose, and the hook. Hunter didn't even blink. He knew that behind the circus costumes, the masks, and the capes, these terrors were pathetic mama's boys. Up ahead was a bend in the hall. Hunter froze when they rounded the corner. This is what he'd been afraid of. The unsolved, the ones that got away. Hunter knew them all, O'Malley, Morrison, and Stubbs. He eyeballed them, each and every one. 
He held his breath as he stepped forward, close to the velvet room. There was a new rogue on display, clad in ninja black. His only identifying mark was his hand with six fingers. Hunter drew a breath. Then the lights went out. The hall was plunged into pitch darkness. The missus screamed. Hunter grabbed for her, but felt a third person brush by them. In a moment, it was over. The lights flicked on. They were still alone, standing in the gallery only now. The missus was gasping for breath, clutching her neck. What is it, Dollface? What's wrong? He asked. The ice, it's gone. Her diamond necklace had been snatched from her throat. I heard a scream. Is everyone all right? It was the manager running through the gallery. The lights went out and someone snatched my wife's diamond necklace, said Hunter. Oh dear, said the manager. We better call the police. I am the police, snapped Hunter. He turned, looking back at the display. That's when he noticed something peculiar about the security guard snoozing in the corner. Mind if I use your phone? Reinforcements arrived moments later. No chance of a slip-up this time. Hunter stealthily crept up on the crook. Ingenious. Where better to hide than in a gallery of the country's most wanted criminals? The guard was still sawing wood when Hunter snapped the cuffs on him. Cut your nap in six fingers, said Hunter, jerking the handcuff with a snap. That's when Hunter realized that he just arrested a wax dummy. This is a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine. And Hunter, he took a good ribbing from the Vegas PD, who never did find the Mrs. Missing Ice. But you know, the funny thing was, next morning, the wax dummy of Six Finger was missing. Gone from the Heroes and Villains Gallery. Missing without a trace. Anybody out there want to marry a millionaire maggot? It's awfully hot in here. <gasps> Thank you. <sighs> Gently. Kitty liked him, too. Off! Off! Yeah. <laughs> At last, I'm king of the coals! Not so fast! Oh, look, a letter from Grandpapa Adams. Grandpapa Adams? How is the old charmer? Well, let's see. Oh, he burned down his house. Again. How do you do it this time? He soaked the carpets in kerosene and torched them. Accidents will happen. Oh, look. He's coming to stay with us while they rebuild his neighborhood. Wonderful! I'll have Lurch install an extra gas leak in the guest room. Mother, why does great-grandpa always burn down his house? He likes the company of firefighters. You see, he's been very lonely since great-grandmama Delilah passed away. Poor thing. She was rollerblading with her headphones on. Didn't even hear that Mack truck. Come, Pugsley. Let's go play in traffic. I'll let you wear my brand new blades. You know, we could all learn a thing or two from Wednesday about being kind to others. Family, how you do the Adams family? Coming to the Adams family. Now. 
cha-cha-cha. Wonderfully scary and pleasantly hairy. Delightfully very. It's the Adams Family. Welcome to the Adams Family. Go into the Adams Family. Come into the Adams Family now. Snap, snap. All the kids. Stirring, uh, seasoning, scooping, stewing, slurping, sampling, swallowing, snacking. Okay, uh, oh, I know, singing, shaking, sashaying, oh, uh, stinking. Okay, shouting, scolding, squabbling, swarming, scaring, okay, scampering, sprinting, scurrying, uh, speeding, scrambling, stressing, oh, sweating. Okay, uh, sheltering, slithering, sneaking, so, oh, what are they? Days! What's the difference between a Shadow Raider and a Flintstone? Well, look closely and you can tell them apart by the small red mark under the eye. Well, the only difference between a Shadow Raider and a Bullwinkle is that the Shadow Raider walks with a slight lean to the left. See it? There, right there. Yeah, the only way to tell a Shadow Raider apart from a sixth grade alien is the small crack on the tailgate of the ship. See it? There it is, right there. That's it. See it? Shadow Raider, it's Friday's at 11.30. Keep it weird on YTV! In the tradition of Digimon, Pokemon, and Dragon Ball Z comes the latest anime from Japan, Snagglepuss! Sayonara! Stay dry! It's the Japanese sensation! Ah, look at me! I am the Tarzan! He's got the big eyes! Soshi! I'm... Angela, do you know what helps OxyPad stop zits? I don't know, and I don't care. It's oxygen. Oxygen stops acne bacteria. Yeah, then why do I get zits in the first place? Because your pores are clogged, oxygen can't get in. Fascinating. Isn't it? Billions of bacteria reproducing inside your skin. Charming. Ooh. But Oxy's medicine unclogs hey. pores, letting oxygen deep down to help stop acne bacteria. There you go. Finally, I can breathe. So can your skin. Think Oxy, think oxygen. Get it? Harder! You're not getting all the kinks in! Poor Grandpa Adams. I hear he visits Delilah's Marble Crypt every day. Good thing he keeps it in the basement. Saves on travel time. I know what Grandpa needs. Fire insurance? Besides that! He needs to play the field. Live a little. Fester, you may be right. Darling, why doesn't Grandpapa date? He tried, but he couldn't find anyone who would wear Delilah's wig. He should visit Club Fed. Club Fed? It's the single resort for ex-cons. You get to lie out on the rocks of Alcatraz. I don't know that ex-cons are really Grandpapa's type. Well, they have other ones. <laughs> Club bed? No, too risque. Club shed? No, that's for lepers only. Ooh, I know. Club dead. It does have a nice ring to it. Swinging resort for singles over 50. And a nice view of the cemetery gives him something to look forward to. Two weeks of club dead it is. It'll be our gift. Gomez, darling, let's not tell Grandpapa until the last day of his visit. We don't want him to think we're trying to get rid of him. He's here! He's here! <laughs> Me. Hi, Grandpa! <laughs> ah, there's nothing like the smell of fester in the morning, is there? Oh, go on! Well, it looks just like home. Even has smoke damage. Where's that young Gomez? Ha ha! 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 Ha 
refreshments all around. Good old Grandpapa. He just got here and already it's like he's head of the household. Morticia, this living room's absolutely dreary. My compliments. Why, thank you. You know, you haven't changed a bit. <laughs> Neither of you. You're just as ravishing as the day you graduated from finishing off school. Well, the formaldehyde helps. You look old enough to be my mother. Flatterer. I'll work. Mmm, thank you. <laughs> hey, Lurch, you really know how to make a cocktail. Just the right amount of vermin. So, Grandpapa, what will you be doing while you're in town? Oh, well, let's see. Oh, yes, nothing. Sounds like a plan to me. <laughs> it is. By the way, I had Lurch install the deluxe rack in the guest room. It's a good one, too. It'll numb all the feeling in your legs. Oh, that's excellent. Well, everyone, a toast. A toast to family and uh, standing three inches taller. <laughs> All aboard! Train swimming for Anaheim Cucamonga Palace. There it is. <sighs> now, check the fuzz button at 7411. You better come inside, let me teach you how to jump the wheel. Oh, you gotta jump the jive, then you will, you gotta jump the jive. 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 Beautiful. <laughs> Good morning, great grandpapa. Good morning, children. How was your sleep? Why, the bed was as hard as a rock. One of the advantages of granite. You think the guest room was nice? Wait till you see where mother and father are sending you. Oh. How sleep? They're sending me somewhere? Club Dead, right next to a cemetery. It's a place for older people. You'll have to forgive my brother. He's prone to making up stories. An admirable trait. Please excuse me, great grandpapa. It's time to feed the animal. And you know how cranky Pugly gets when he hasn't eaten. Club dead. Older people? A cemetery? Wait a minute. They're sending me to a nursing home. should have gotten on that plane. He thought he was lost forever. We had a funeral, coffin. What was in it? But the end of an extraordinary journey. We're gonna bring you back to life. Jack! Was only the beginning. Tom Hanks, Castaway, a Robert Zemeckis film. Rated PG-13, December 22nd only in theaters. This is Jeb and his mule, Bo. Imagine they represent software on your computer. They work hard for you. Thanks, fellas. Gosh darn it, your computer crashed. Jeb and Bo are gone. Now who will do the work? Hey, it's a copy of Jeb and Bo you saved on an iOmega zip disk. Go, Jeb. Go, Bo. Zip it. Zip it. Beyond the darkness lies a journey that will test your courage and consume your world. Diablo 2. Evil has survived. 
rated M for Mature. Play it now on PC and Macintosh. Hey! The evil has landed. Oh my god. And it's spreading like a plague. Gary Sinise. What did you people do? Rob Lowe, Molly Ringwald, and Laura San Giacomo. Stephen King's demonic masterpiece. We are dead, and this is hell. The Stand concludes tonight at 9 Eastern and Pacific on Sci Fi. What's going on? Where is everything? This place is utterly, totally deserted. We're no longer in our own time, ladies and gentlemen. Have a look around you. This is the past. American Pride Flight 29 has embarked on a journey to the end of time. Stephen King's The Langoliers starts Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern and Pacific on Sci-Fi. <laughs> Why would they put me in a home? It's not as though I were senile, or indigent, or a frequent guest on daytime talk shows. Certainly they can't think I'm feeble. Maybe they think I'm old-fashioned. Thing, how could they do this to me? In five easy installments? Any thoughts on what I should do? Oh, Joe, that's brilliant! I'll pretend to be 50 years younger. I'll show them I'm too young to go to a home. I'll be downright invincible! Oh, 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 my bursitis. Cousin Winkle, sleepwalking again. Oh, oh, nothing like a pre-dawn jog to put blisters on your feet. <laughs> Grandpapa, you shouldn't be jogging at this hour. Why not? There's no traffic. Oh, yes. Although it is good for spying on the neighbors. <laughs> I just can't help it. I have so much energy. <laughs> Relax. One bite of a Mazla bottomy line pie, you'll be as docile as a doorknob. Oh, no. You can't put a man down while he's in his prime. Now, let's find Cousin Winkle. <laughs> let's go. Come on. Come on. Oh, man. Oh, he's fast. Hey! Look how nicely the hemlock is coming along. Just in time. Nitroglycerin and a dash of sulfuric acid? Is it two parts of sulfuric acid and a uh, dash uh, of There's nothing like bench pressing 500 pounds to get the circulation going. Yeah, I'd like to exercise too, but I'm too lazy. Uh, what's that? Someone's birthday coming up? No, it's a bomb for fishing. Oh, I love the way you take the sport out of the hunt. Oh, Let me look at your handiwork. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. I see. I Be careful that. with that. We oh. gotta let the nitroglycerin settle. Oh, you don't have to worry. I studied ballistics. I it was a statistics. Uh, let me let me look at this button. Yeah, I don't touch this. the button. No, we gotta be very careful. I this. love the stopper in here. The stopper in the button. Button. Hi, right, George. That button really works. Black widows make the best webs. They really catch the dust. He's at it again. What do you think you're doing? I can't hear you. Hang on there. All right. Grandpapa Adams, whatever possessed you to buy a motorcycle? 
Why, they expose you to the fresh air as well as the sun. And those leather trousers. How are you supposed to get scrapes with those? I know, but it's what all the other Hells Angels are wearing. Perhaps I could talk to them about initiating a new dress code. Grandpa, where's Pugsley? Pugsley? Yes, the two of you left this morning, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, let me see. He was right behind me when I backed up on that freeway ramp. You don't suppose the little rebel has snuck off to school, do you? Ah, here's our boy now. <laughs> nice looking bruises, son. <sighs> Fine looking fellow, isn't he? Fester, do you know where Gomez is? I haven't seen him since he went out looking for Cousin Winkle. I'm sure he's fine. Or at least better than Grandpapa. So you've noticed Grandpapa Adam's odd behavior, too? Noticed? Noticed? Morticia face facts. He's lost it. Uh-oh. Here comes the nut now. Morticia? Fester? If anybody's looking for me, tell them I'm out dragging the rivers. Grandpapa, aren't you a bit... Well, mature to go river dragging? Yeah. Shouldn't he be dueling windmills instead? Nonsense! I'm as fit today as I was when I was 16. Grandpapa, please sit down. I'm sorry, Morticia. I've got to keep going. Going! Going! He's gone, gone, gone. C'est la vie. That's French. God, me. Speak some more. Soup du jour, la plume de batant, crap Suzette. Grandpapa! Charles de Gaulle. Grandpapa! I'm afraid I must uh, tender my apologies. I must have lost myself for a minute. You see, whenever I hear French, something comes over me. Good thing Cousin Winkle came back and let me out of his coffin. Just in time, too. Grandpapa, yes. will you excuse us? I need to speak to Gomez alone. Oh, of course. Yes. We need to talk. Care to join me in a nightcap? Hmm? No, thanks. I prefer to sleep in the buff. Tish, being separated from you all day was more than I could bear. Darling, I missed you too, but we've got quite a problem with Grandpapa Adams on our hands. So take him off our hands. Put him on Fester's hands. Put him on Thing's hand. Put him on Dishpan hands. Grandpapa first. Grand passion later. And now, about Grandpapa Adams. He's been acting very strangely. Well, he did knock me in a Cousin Winkle's coffin without asking permission. You don't think he's... I'm afraid so. The loss of his dear Delilah must have taken a greater toll on him than we thought. Not to worry. He can come and live with us. Darling, that's a noble idea. But I'm afraid Grandpapa may need professional help. Then we'll hire movers. That's not exactly what I had in mind. Narcoma Nursing Home, giving patients all the rest they need and more. Miles from the nearest hospital, so no annoying sirens. $100,000 non-refundable deposit. Reasonable, too. Call now for a doctor evaluation. I suppose it doesn't hurt to get an expert opinion. Maybe you're right, Tish. Narcoma Nursing Home? Uh, well, nothing like a good river dragging to make you feel alive. Come on, great grandpapa. Let's go bungee jump from an overpass. Oh, great idea. Why, why stop at an overpass? Why not leap from the tallest building? Parachute from a craggy cliff. Wade in a kiddie pool. Be force fed in a nursing home. Cool. Great grandpapa, what's wrong? Oh, nothing. Except that Gomez and Morticia want to send me to an old folks home to rot in a metal bed. Great, Grandpapa. They would never send you away. They only do that to their male offspring after his 12th birthday. But you said they were sending me to Club Dead. Club Dead isn't a nursing home. It's a resort. Club Dead? 
swinging singles club for people over 50. Booze, schmooze, and snooze. Looks like they've thought of everything. Ha! Huh. Let our club coordinator visit your home and plan a trip specially suited to your needs. Oh, I hope they have roast yak, pan fried, sticks to my teeth. But don't tell mother and father. They want it to be a surprise. Oh, no, no. Don't worry, children. Your secret is safe with me. <laughs> News. Ah, Dr. Cratchit. I'm Morticia Adams, and this is my charming husband, Gomez. So nice of you to perform the evaluation. Well, at Narcoma Nursing Home, we try to make our patients delirious. I mean, deliriously happy. Grandpapa! Hi, ah, Gomez, Morticia! I love what you've done with the bed! Why those spikes are so pointy, you can puncture a lung? <laughs> Grandpapa, we'd like to talk to you about something. Of course, I always have time for my uh, favorite grandson and his lovely wife. Uh, anyway, Morticia and I have been noticing that you seem a little out of sorts lately. Oh, thank you. I try my best. Uh, anyway, uh, we think that maybe you could use a rest. A long rest. With some professional guidance. Oh, I couldn't agree more. When do I leave? And you're not adverse to the idea of going away for a while? To the contrary. The longer the better. It's something I should have done years ago. It's worse off than we thought. Well, then, I guess it's all settled. Yes. You won't regret this, Grandpapa. <laughs> Dr. Cratchit, Grandpapa Adams. Pleased to make your acquaintance, Doctor. This is the patient. Evaluation over. Let's go. Boys, take him away. Oh, look at this. Ah, footrests. This really is a deluxe resort. Now, we want to be sure Grandpapa Adams is comfortable. Are the rooms nice? Are they well insulated? Well, we have a few that are padded. Splendid. I'll take one of those. Let's go. Schnell. Ta-ta. Goodbye, Grandpapa Adams. Don't forget to scroll. I won't. Darling, do you think we did the right thing? That Dr. Cratchit seemed rather curt. Always a sign of a good doctor. No bedside manner. Besides, Grandpapa really wanted to go. True. You'd almost think he was leaving on vacation. Tell me, are the single women of the club as attractive as Dr. Cratchit? I really love her scowl. Oh, Lottie. Your head's so shiny, I can see myself. <laughs> Look, dear, it's Grandpapa Adams. Grandpapa, back already? Like the club burned down. Too bad. I'm getting to enjoy those spinal taps. How'd you start the fire this time? Oh, I didn't. Deandra did. Deandra? Everyone, I want you to meet my new wife, Deandra. I took one look at her, and sparks flew. Then again, she was holding a blowtorch. How romantic. We leave tomorrow for our honeymoon to Africa. It's a little sunny, but I hear the brush fires are spectacular. Funny? You remind me of someone. A toast. To one big happy family. Cheers.
my angle bro. Whoa. Your favorite characters. Great minds think alike. Your favorite shows. Incredible adventures. It's fantabulous. Bringing you the best in kids' television. Looks like a rich snort in good times, SpongeBob. Chorus Entertainment. Plus, we've juiced up the flavor. You could win a juiced up life from New C Plus. Just visit ytv.com for details and to enter for your chance to win one of four $2,500 or one of $2,500 electronics gift cards. I'm here where a brand new show called Danny Phantom was just shipped in. It's in that warehouse over there. Let's go look. It must be in one of the boxes somewhere. It's made by the guys who made Fairly Odd Parents, so there's a real buzz. What's that noise? What's the buzz? Danny's half ghost and can see, hear, and talk to the paranormal. And did I mention battle them? Which box is he in? Oh, rats, gross! I guess ghosts are hard to see. Well, they're ghosts. They're see-through. <laughs> hey, I heard a rumble. Great ghost of Caesar! Doesn't anyone use a door anymore? Danny Phantom, Tuesdays at 5.30 in the zone. Now available from the zone, Danny Phantom's horrible hygiene kit. Oh, crap. Scaraway moaning breath. Why does it smell like beans? One of them has had a burrito. With Boogeyman Breath Blaster. And for those stinky pits. Woo! I reek. Danny's demonic deodorant. So call now for this really, really, really expensive product. We do accept your parents' credit cards. As well as Dad's toenail clippings or your big brother's Speedos. Operators are standing by. Call now. Danny Phantom, new episode starts September 7th in the zone. <laughs> some fun. part of the country that never sees snow. What are you talking about? It snowed four years ago. And where was I? Mm -hmm. I was on vacation in California, remember? By the time we got 
got home, the snow had all melted. And it hasn't snowed in Burnaby since. Who says you need snow to enjoy winter? Way to go, Ian, your first snowman. It's just not the same, though. My field! What have you done to my field? <laughs> Principal McCammon. <laughs> in and every week he leaves without buying anything. Quiet, honey. He'll hear you. So? He's wasting our time. <clears throat> well, Mr. Eric, what do you think? Oh! It includes preset tampos for you to play along to. Enough! Look, buddy, either buy the organ or get out. This isn't a library. Vicky, uh, Mr. Eric, I'm so sorry. I... This is truly an organ forged by the gods. I must possess it. But know this, organ merchant. You have only until midnight tonight to deliver the instrument unto me. Or else... Or else what? We get a bag of gold? Seems like a pretty good deal. I think or else was meant as some form of threat, dear. Oh. Oh, Oddbald, we've got a delivery to make. Stat! Where are we going? No talking. <gasps> Ew. <laughs> but what about our classes? You'll have to make them up on your own time. You're spending the afternoon down here until each and every one of these gym towels is washed, dried, and folded. Oh! Oddbald, are, are you all right? Uh, you could still work, can't you? According to my weather nose, a storm is brewing. Your weather nose? No. Oddball. <laughs> you can't predict weather from your aches and pains. That's just a myth, like Bigfoot or the magical kingdom of France. It's a beautiful day. In fact, I don't think I need my jacket. Ooh, it's sure warm. Oh, what's the lemonade? Please call a snow day. 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 Please call a... Hang on. Attention, this is Principal McCammon. I am declaring a snow day. Did you hear something? What? Did you hear something? We're clowning around! <laughs> We can totally do whatever we want for the rest of the day! There once was a Frenchman, he fought was his name. Exploring new worlds, he dreamed was his fame. Let's go, Oddball. I am sorry, Mr. Kelly, but it is a tradition in my country never to deliver an organ during a snowstorm. We call this tradition... sanity. Ken, the city is shut down. Schools have closed, the roads are a mess. Oh, just phone that threatening and mysterious Mr. Eric and tell him we can't deliver the organ tonight. Say, that's so crazy, it just might work. <laughs> Mr. Eric? Uh, Ken Kelly. I know we promised to deliver the organ tonight, but with this storm, uh, what's that? Great! I told you he'd understand. And our entire family will be cursed for all eternity if I don't deliver that organ by midnight. <gasps> Did he mention employees? No. Then good luck and good night! There's only one thing to do. Let's go, you two. The Kelly men have an organ to deliver. What about Ian? Kyle and Corey are all the help I'll need. No, I mean, where is Ian? Uh... <laughs> It's so late. I just want to go home and sleep. Huh? How can you even think of going home and sleeping 
when it's snowing. It's coming down kind of heavy, isn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. Um, is that normal? We've got to get out of here. <laughs> Yo! We just can't! Not with all that fresh snow! The back doors! Come on! Observe. <sighs> you see? We just have to climb out. Way to go, Tyrone! Now we're lit. <laughs> I've got to get out! I've just got to! <laughs> hey, this stuff is cold! Hey, Angle Bro! <laughs> Attention, students! Let's Thursdays at 8.30. One day at the Fruit Roll-Ups Factory. Good morning, Sean. Good morning, Steve. Have you seen Sean? He looks funny. Oh, so Steve. The faces, they're all stretched out! Huh? I've got it! Carmen Gage Fruit Roll-Ups now come in stretchy faces. The more you stretch them, the funnier the faces get. What fun fruit roll-ups will we roll out with next? You could instantly win a cool trip to meet a hot music superstar, Christina Aguilera, Five or LFO. See specially marked boxes of fruit roll-ups for details. You got the confidence. You got the right attitude. Now you can just add kick for part of the nutrition you need. Kick is complex carbs for the energy you want, working together with vitamin B1 and iron. Kick is in the Kellogg cereals you already love. with food energy by kick from Kellogg, you feel like anything is possible. You gotta balance food and activity, working together, the body electricity. Let's start with the food that your body load. You gobble it up and send it on the road. The food gets to its destination. It's your gastric fascination. Your stomach acts like a wood burning fire. It burns your lunch up, that's your body's desire. You gotta balance food and activity, working together. The body electricity But there's a problem here that'll make you most stop When you just sit around the engine will flop So you gotta get moving for the work to be done If you lay on a couch you won't be any fun If you just sit your gut will be blue If you sit and sit you'll turn to goo You gotta balance food and activity Working together The body electricity The moral is you gotta balance the two With good food and activity You can make a healthy you You gotta balance food and activity Working together, the body electricity. Mom! Ian! Oh, thank goodness. Where are you? Uh, I'm kind of stuck at school. It's Ian. You should stay where you are until the storm has passed. Your mother's absolutely right, Ian. Only a fool would try to go anywhere tonight. Let's go, boys! Oh. Trapped at school? Every kid's worst nightmare. On the bright side, I bet we don't have classes tomorrow. Just saying. <sighs> if Snowy were here, he'd find a way to get me out so we could play. Who's Snowy? And does he have a snowplow? Snowy's not real. He's just a magical snowman who befriends me in my imaginary winter adventures. <laughs> That's one of those personal things I shouldn't share, isn't it? <laughs> no. No. It's fine. Hey, maybe we're looking at this all wrong. We have to think of this as an opportunity. An opportunity for what? To break every school rule we can! <laughs> Ha! <laughs> 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 
<laughs> right, Ian? Oh, yeah, that was the most exciting five minutes of my life. <laughs> That's ridiculous. We must have been running around for over six minutes at least. It's gonna be a long night. E, what do you want to do now? All my life, I've dreamed of snow. And now I'm trapped inside. This just... How about we get something to eat? Sure. Who's got food? Out of the way! I've got a pregnant goat in this car that I have to get to the airport! Uh, pretend you're a pregnant goat. Make Corey do it. Kyle, now! Bah, bah. I said a goat, that's a sheep. Just pretend you have a pregnant sheep in the car. Oh, and who's going to believe that? Uh, uh Dad, I've got an idea. <laughs> great idea, Chloe. <laughs> yeah, great, great idea. Nope. Nada. Nothing. <laughs> Wait a minute. Doesn't this school have a cafeteria? Hey, yeah! You mean cafeteria food? <sighs> Wait a minute. There's a vending machine in that cafeteria. <laughs> Dad, how far do we have to go? I left the address back in the car. <laughs> to the car! I mean, right here. Uh, at last, a break. Ah, uh, uh. uh, Kyle, where's the organ? It's right there, dude. Uh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Ooh, we're saved. Uh, I've got twenty-five cents. I've got 50 cents. I've got lint. We can't get anything for 75 cents. Sure we can. Look, that bottle of water's only 75 cents. Why would we buy a bottle of water if we can drink from the tap? Because it's Glacier Mountain Fresh. I'm gonna be quiet for a while. Come on, come on, Grab my hand! We did it! That'll stop this out of control trailer and. I wasn't scared. Uh, me neither. I've got the address. Let's go. Uh, Kyle? Corey? Oregon? Snowed in. Uh. No food. <sighs> now Sandy's losing it? It can't get any worse. <clears throat> what are you doing? I'm having a delicious air sandwich. Mmm, chock full of oxygen. <laughs> Snowed in, no food, and now Ian's losing it? It can't get any worse. I stand corrected. Food! I got food! You got better than food! You got dessert! We're saved! We can divide it three ways and... Hey! I, I couldn't resist. Maybe if we hit it again, we'll get more food. Yeah, sure, Sandy. I'll just hit the vending machine like this and get free food. Hey, it worked. What are the odds? Yeah, uh, -uh. only Tyrone and I get this one. E, I did a bad thing. Yes, yes, you did. But if you and Sandy can get a free dessert cake, so can I. <laughs> I 
I get it. <laughs> You've turned the vending machine against me. Ian, are you all right? <laughs> I'm fine. Why? Do I seem upset? Relax, E. We'll get you something to eat. Oh, I'll get something to eat. Don't think I won't. Don't you think he's acting a little odd? Hmm. No more than usual. Barricade the door! Some friends they turned out to be, eating all the food. Who needs them anyway? I sure don't. <laughs> Sounds like someone needs a true friend. Snowy! Oh, sounds like someone also needs some food. That's not what I bet. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Forget it, Tyrone. It was a complete fluke to get two dessert cakes. There's no way we're getting a third. Maybe you're right. Tyrone! You should have saved that cake for Ian. Relax. I saved him half. Ugh. We're bad people. What do you mean, we? I saved him some. Look, Snowy. My first snow angel. <laughs> Not really, Ian. You see, this is all just a figment of your imagination. You've caught cabin fever. <laughs> Cabin fever or not, I'm having a ball. Of course, it doesn't change the fact that I'm starving. But Ian, that's the best part about having cabin fever. Anything can be your meal. It's wonderful. Ian, buddy, pal, brother. We tried really hard, but we didn't get any more dessert cakes. None at all. <laughs> oh, don't worry about me. I found myself a hot dog and a shake. And you didn't save any for us? <laughs> don't be ridiculous. How could a milkshake eat itself? I don't know, Ian. How could a milkshake eat itself? Uh, I don't think he's kidding. Milkshake. My name's not Milk... Oh. Ian, you're freaking me out. <laughs> oh, what you waiting for, Ian? Them's good eating. You said a mouthful, Snowy. I am hiring movers. How'd you find us? I watched you two lunatics careen all over the city on the news. Dude, we were on the news. Oh, for Pete's sake, just hook the trailer up and get in. Hurry, we're late. <laughs> Milkshake, hot dog. We need to find Ian some food and fast. He's gone completely loopy. But we've looked everywhere. There's got to be somewhere. The, the fridge, fridge in the, the teacher's, teacher's lounge! lounge. <laughs> shut the door! Shut the door! Man, I'd rather eat my sneaker than anything from in there. So what should we feed Ian? That's it. Tyrone, you've given me an idea. Kill two birds with one stone. Milkshake, hot dog. Lure Ian back to the cafeteria and wait for my signal. What's the signal? You'll know it when you hear it. I think I should know what the signal is. Because what if I hear something that sounds like the signal and it isn't? I could... Ah! Hey, Ian! Milkshake! I'm so happy to see you, I could eat you up. Thanks! <laughs> Uh... Organ merchant, where is my instrument? Ah, Mr. Eric. <laughs> We've got a slight problem. Silence! You have failed me for the last time. 
There was a first time? Mr. Eric, where do you want the organ? Honey, how did you... No! Doomed organ merchant! Both you and these fools who work for you! Doomed! Now wait a cotton polyester minute! Only a fool would get an organ delivered in a snowstorm and not clear his sidewalk! In fact, you're lucky I don't sue you! What? Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we can come to some arrangement. Everyone, in the car! We're going home! But, but, but... And don't expect the warranty to cover repairs! Okay, Tyrone, I'm ready. Is that the signal? Of course it's the signal. What am I supposed to do? Just lure Ian to the front door. Oh, good. I thought it was going to be something hard. Come back, sweet chocolatey milkshake. <laughs> the world's largest dessert cake. Are you sure this is going to work? At least he's eating something. Snowy, we made it! We're free! Ian, who are you talking to? Um, no one. <laughs> ah, ah, brain freeze! Have you actually returned to our world? E, you were totally whacked in there. Guys, I'm sorry. I must have gotten cabin fever. But we never would have escaped if you hadn't gotten all nutty. Good point. Hey, look! It's Mom! We're safe! <laughs> Are you kids all right? Nothing a little food won't fix. Oh, my angel, I've got a slow cooker full of tofu stew ready and waiting at home. <laughs> Super. Hold on tight. The roads are still a little slippery. Oh, nuts. We're stuck. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Pokemon Gold and Silver games? You're not ready for the next step. Tons of new characters like Lugia and Ho-Oh. I bet you haven't even gone to YTN.com for any Pokemon Gold or Silver game tips. Or the live web chat with Pokemon game experts. Or even the awesome contest. Contest? Watch the zones, get info on how to win a trip. See Pokemon Live, the musical, or one of 20 Pokemon Gold and Silver Game Boy games. Doesn't look like you're ready for the next step. Walmart, Pokemon Gold and Silver headquarters. <laughs> Powerpuff Girls are back with the powers of Puff, Puff, and Pow! Now Professor Utonium cheers for no reason whatsoever! Uh, yeah. Woohoo! Powerpuff Girls starts Monday at 4! <laughs> See the comedy critics are calling one of the funniest films of the year. What? Oh. It's hip, sassy, and hilarious. Hi there. A holiday ah. must-see. Pull the lever. Roll the lever! This means The Emperor's New Groove, rated G. Uh -huh. Now playing at a theater near you. I'm Sci-Fi Santa. I'm Sci-Fi Santa. I've got presents for you. Christmas weekend, nothing better to do. Rocket ships, wizards, laser guns, protections, atomic bombs, robots, Godzilla, destruction. All your holiday favorites and sci fi played at this. It's a sci fi check of our two thousand on sci fi. 
Illegal street racing. No tracks, no pit stops, no respect for the law. Rockstar Games presents Midnight Club, rated T for Teen. Midnight Club. Stasis law is imminent. I must act fast. A small sample will do. <laughs> the energon's been absorbed directly into my superstructure. I've never felt such power! I'm invincible! <laughs> Megatron! <gasps> Jumping gyros! I've never seen Pterosaur move like that, but he won't leave me in the dust! Hmm. I've 
program this target box with the Maximals energy signatures. Now, watch. Excellent. With a few more of these in place, this area will become a death trap for the Maximals. Just the sort of plan a cowardly lizard like yourself would conceive of, Megatron! Which is why I am assuming command of the Predacons! What? I thought you'd already learned your lesson about challenging me, Terrorosaur. Today I'm the teacher, if you have the courage. <laughs> Very well. I could use some amusement. Megatron, terrorize! <laughs> That was amusing, but not as funny as this! Anyone want to argue about it? No, not me. <laughs> no, 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 no. Good. Then charge yourselves for battle. The Maximals will be the next to taste my power! Ultra bad. Orders. Waspinator and I. What? Waspinator and I. Is something wrong, Pterosaur? Diagnostic. My secrets only. Energon drain. Power down. Fifty percent. Stasis lock. Imminent. Transform immediately. I uh, must uh, uh, see something before the attack. Uh, Tarantulas will command until my return. What does he mean, you command? I'm second in command! So, command. Well? Well what? If you're second in command, what is your command? Make ready the restoration module. We must salvage our true leader. Cheetor is coming in at top speed. Better open the hatch. Yeah, yeah, just let me finish this hand. I mean, that is stinking pewter for half a million. Ah, Optimus! Cheetar wouldn't be moving this fast if he didn't have something urgent to report. Uh, 
Big Bot, Predacons attacking Megatron's Scrap Pterosaur, Power Source Mountain floating. Calm down, Cheetor. Better transform. That's better. Now tell us, slowly. Right. Pterosaur's leading the Predacons now. He's going to attack our base. <gasps> what about Megatron? Pterosaur scrapped him like he was a, a maintenance bot. He must have found some monster energon source on that floating mountain. Floating mountain? I knew it. You got your circuits crossed, kiddo. Even on this weird dirt ball, mountains don't fly. Not fly, float. It's true, Optimus. I saw it. Pterosaur flew away from it faster than I've ever seen him move. Rhinox, intensify perimeter scan and see if you can get through to Dinobot. I want the Predacon spotted. Now, where did you see this floating mountain? Right here. <laughs> The energon must be unstable. I, I, I need more of it. Enough to finish off the Maximals for good. <laughs> That's right. Lead me to your secret. Then we'll see who commands who. <laughs> I got two of them. Patch it into the map grid. Looks like Pterosaur and... Uh, hey, what happened? Energon interference. They must be near a large concentration of it. Hmm. A mountain of it, to be more precise. Told you, rat breath. Do you ask me? You and Optimus both need to be debugged. You know it's possible. If the Energon were unstable, and there was a big enough concentration, it could lift a mountain off the ground. My thought exactly. Rat Trap, rig for demolition and meet me at the roof hatch in five cycles. To do what? Destroy that mountain before the Predacons try to secure it. Rhinox, set the defense grid on maximum. It's always something. Energon concentration in danger level. Stasis lock in five cycles. Ha! More than enough time. Man, oh man! If I wanted to fly, I would have become a bat, not a rat. It was the fastest way, and will you stop wiggling? I really, really hate this! Calm down, we're here. Guess I uh, owe the pussycat an apology. Energon Surge. Return to Beast Mode or Stasis Lock is imminent. Cheetor was right. This mountain's bristling with Energon to use our robotic form sparingly. Yeah, let's just blow this joint and go home! <gasps> now to regain my power. Yes! Yes! <laughs> uh oh, this 
is bad. <laughs> What feel is Lita? That bread looks like he could eat Tyronium. Look, his circuits can't hold a charge that massive for long. I'll lead him away. You set the charges and I'll come back for you in four cycles. And suppose he blasts you to itty bitty pieces. It's a long way down. Sure is. <sighs> I hate a wise butt. Optimus Primal, maximize! <laughs> Optimus, how nice of you to save me the trouble of hunting you down. Let's do it. Stasis lock imminent. No, not now! I'll be back for you as soon as I replenish my power! <sighs> Got to get to Rat Trap. Not much time. <sighs> You can't win, Vermin. I am your superior! Stick it in your command module, Eight Eyes! Optimus lost this round, and that means I'm one gone rat! <laughs> must recharge, or oh, must. <gasps> uh. Demolition! 
demolition charges. They'll tear this mountain to pieces! Well, at least I'm going out with the bay. The only place we're going is home. Fearless leader! Woohoo! I thought you were scrap! Well, we'll both be if we don't hurry. On my back, quick! Okay, make like a bird! Can't! The energon blast will fry my circuit permanently. Just hold on tight. Oh man, oh man, oh man, don't tell me you're gonna... time, but my arms feel like refried rubber bands. <laughs> Will you mind taking a little weight off my back? <sighs> you do know that was crazy. Uh, sometimes crazy works. By the way, you did good up there. <laughs> you weren't so bad yourself. But uh, don't tell anybody I said so. Blast those Maximals! They destroyed my power! But at least I got rid of Megatron! Well, well. Look who's back. Crazy again. Cherry oh, Mama. Don't sweat it. But Del Monte Very Cherry, you never miss out on that awesome taste because it's loaded with delicious cherries. Look, Squirt, we've all got some cherries, freak. Very Cherry makes fruit from Del Monte. Relax, you always get the cherry. May I take your order, please? Make McDonald's Play Doh stuff in any wacky way you want. I want my Play Doh, please. McDonald's Chicken McNugget Play Shop, case of color sold separately. Find a play with not to eat. We went behind the scenes and asked the Shadow Raiders how they unwind after a hard day saving the universe. Well, I go for a swim, it sort of cools my head, you know? And you, Graveheart? A chance to relax and we'll get to know one another better. Sissy, and you down there! And you, sir? I like walking and talking, walking and talking, just to myself. No one's listening. I just walk and talk. Well, that's it. Behind the scenes of Shadow Raiders. <laughs> Shadow Raiders, Wednesdays at 7.30. Things, they come in different shapes and sizes. Things, they work. In many different ways Sometimes one can look just 
just like the other Sometimes one is different every day One thing's for sure like a square One thing's for sure They're always changing One thing's for sure We don't know why All that I know Is when I'm grown up I'll be the size To look them in the different ways Sometimes one can look just like the other Sometimes one is different every day One thing's for sure They're always changing One thing's for sure We don't know why All that I know is when I come from the net, through systems, peoples, and cities, to this place, Mainframe. My format, Guardian, to mend and defend, to defend my newfound friends, their hopes and dreams, to defend them from their enemies. lives outside the net and inputs games for pleasure. No one knows for sure, but I intend to find out. Reboot! outside. Come on! No, really. I'm worried about the Mitchell account inputs. It'll just take a nanosecond. Thought! You promised! Remember that speech you gave me about keeping your promises? Dot? Hello? I'm coming. Pretty cool, huh? I don't believe it. Bob? Is your car actually running? Yep. Isn't it awesome? Oh, not again. Dot! And the net codes? Formatted and docked? Of course, Ms. Matrix. Please, call me Dot. Yes, Ms. Matrix. <sighs> what do you think, Enzo? Yeah, let's. Wait! Just one more call. That's all. <laughs> you two put me down. Sir, 
What's our status? Status! After all the time, all the effort, all the lies, we finally have it. Gentlemen, meet the Medusa. Finally! Hexadecimal's ultimate weapon! What is it? A box! I don't know, it's... a box? She thought she could hide its secret from me. She thought she could develop a weapon this powerful without my knowledge. Oh, poor fool. Megabyte! Oh, that would be her now. You lie! I was a fool to trust you! How true. It was, however, very clever the way you tricked me out of one of my toys. But whatever could you do with it? Just a little trinket. You might as well give it back. Really, Hexadecimal, I don't have time for this. Oh, how very, very sad. I'll have to destroy you all, then. Well, get to work, you two. I don't keep you around for your brains now, do I? No, sir, not our brains. Absolutely not. Ooh, this is it. It's over now. Uh, no, oh, this is heavy. It's not in my job description. Mind me. Oh, that's heavy. Oh, I don't care where you're from. That hurts. Ooh. Then I shall smite you myself, dog. Gentlemen, show the lady some of our own toys, won't you? I'll see you back at the tour. Dear Hexadecimal, I am so disappointed in you. It was her fault, you know. Her increased security and strict privacy led me to my victory. She was so careful, so secretive. I knew she was up to something. And yet, despite the length and scope of our operation, we still do not know the true nature of the Medusa's power. Until now. No. No. This is no weapon. It is a viral bug. Computer, identify virus. Full scan. List possible cures and counteracting agents. Fire type. Unknown. Counter agents. Unknown. Your options? Unknown. Getting your sorry self out of trouble? Unknown. 
I see you found my little surprise. <laughs> Isn't it sweet? You, all this time, all your secrecy, all your security, my whole operation. Yes, yes. A trap. Now I suppose you'll want thanks for all your hard work. with an unstoppable bug. Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Reboot will return after these messages. sound effects. Here's a T-Rex. at everything. Everybody's good at something. What's your thing? Angela, do you know what helps OxyPad stop zits? I don't know, and I don't care. It's oxygen. Oxygen stops acne bacteria. Yeah, then why do I get zits in the first place? Because your pores are clogged, oxygen can't get in. Fascinating. Isn't it? Billions of bacteria reproducing inside your skin. Charming. Ooh. But Oxy's medicine unclogs hey. pores, letting oxygen deep down to help stop acne bacteria. There you go. Finally, I can breathe. So can your skin. Think Oxy, think oxygen. Get it? We now return to Reboot. Nice picnic, guys. I'm working here, okay? I'm working. Want some help? <sighs> Don't get me wrong. I gotta admit, it is kind of nice to get away from it all. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Brisket? Check it out! Something weird is chasing Brisket! File type. This is bad. Very bad. Uh, Bob, I think we are next. Uh, I think you're right. Glitch, ignition. <laughs> Quick, try her again. Again! Uh, boys. Look, Enzo, we can't. 
can't help frisk it if the same thing happens to us. Don't worry, we'll be back. When we know what we're dealing with. Bob, what is that thing? We need to see Fong. Now. It is a bug, pure and simple. It can and will spread to anything it touches. We are all at risk. You, Bob, however, may be immune since you are a guardian. It is difficult to tell. Trust me, I don't want to find out. But I do want to get out there and warn everybody. We need a plan first. Poor Frisket. I bet old Mega Dump is behind all this. I say we crash his tower, big time. I don't know, Enzo. This one isn't his style. It's too unpredictable, too, too dangerous. It's completely random, almost chaotic. Hexadecimal? Bingo. It must be her. Look, even the Tor has been infected. But not Hex's island. Hexadecimal, huh? This one's got me worried, Fong. I mean, that Hex is as loopy as they come. I'm gonna need everything you've got to fight it. Bob worried? Dude. Worse yet, children, is that the longer one is infected, the sooner they begin to decay. See here. Low energy goes first, like this sign. But then, high energy goes next. High energy. Sprites like us. And frisk it! Truly. That's not even funny! What are we gonna do? Dot, you and Enzo get everyone evacuated from the city. It is next in the bug's path. Right. Bob, you come with me. We must hurry. Greek action. <laughs> Hey, you two be careful out there. You too. I'll need two Highline Virocidal self-adjusting and a level 8 desktop rebuilder wide fielding. What? This is not the supercomputer, Bob. I'm afraid this is all we have to offer. Virus Erase Command? Don't you think that's a little primitive? Uh, perhaps, but it is the best we have. Hmm. I suppose if we boost its power with an add-on, it might do the trick. Crude, but simple. Then let us make it so. Reboot will return after these messages. YTV.com, it's better! You bet! More fantastically fabulistic! Like taking your brain for a ride on a super classic roller coaster of fun! It'll have you jumping through hoops! YTV.com! More games that'll knock your socks off! More info on your fave shows! Win cool stuff on contests! Send e-cards to friends! So log on and keep clicking, it'll get you for the prison! YTV.com, it's new and insta-peculous! Check out my new Yu-Gi-Oh cards from the really, really rare Uber Deluxe Shiznit deck. Behold the Guardian of Zutalor, whose special ability forces you to watch French monkey movies. Allez, s'il vous plaît. Ne pas chatouille, moi. Ne pas chatouille. And here's the greasy knob of despair trap card. Its special ability makes it tough to open doors. What's going on? I'm locked in. I bet you want these cards, huh? Well, too bad. I'm not sharing. Yu-Gi-Oh! Monday through Thursday at 7.30. Ivan will always be cold because he insists on trying to earn a living as a male underwear model. Personally, I don't think he's got the legs for it. Ivan of the Yukon Thursday is at 7. We now return to Reboot.
see that, Scuzzy. How sad. All of mainframe doomed. <laughs> What's this? Bob the Guardian? Oh no, oh no! Oh yes. Now won't this be interesting? <laughs> All right, you antique. Do your thing. <gasps> My poor Medusa! Happy, happy, happy! This is not good. Where's a GameCube when you need one? Hurry, people! Come on, Bob! You can make it! Bob! You were right, old friend. I am immune. Lucky me. Let Hexadecimal turn all my friends into stone, destroy Mainframe, and get away with it? I don't think so. Do you like my new garden, Scuzzy? It holds up so much better than some of my earlier members. Well, for now at least. Does it please you? I asked you a question! That would be me! That's a good one, Guardian. Infect me with the Medusa. How delightfully clever. Why, thank you. Now we can 
can't have any of that, young man. And you, immune to my Medusa. How very disappointing. I'll just have to destroy you the old-fashioned way. Glitch! Why? As much as I enjoy the chaos you bring into my life, it is time to be rid of you once and for all. Uh, I like... Uh, I like how you've changed mainframe. Do you? And why is that, my love? Well, now that everything is set in stone, you've made Mainframe so predictable. What do you mean? Everyone in the same spot, never changing, never moving, nothing but still and quiet. How very peaceful it will all be now. Peaceful? Oh dear. How true. No more battles with Megabyte? Quiet! Silence! No more unexpected turn of events? No! No! What have I done? No! Just peace and calm forever. No! No! I must... I must stop it! Stop it all from going so very wrong! Now that is one strange lady. <laughs> It's one miracle after another. First, I fix my car, then I save Mainframe from the brink of destruction. <sighs> but most incredibly, Enzo and I actually get you to relax. You both should get a medal. Thanks. <sighs> but I think I'll settle for a long nap instead. Warning. Incoming game. Warning. Incoming game.
moons. Full power to shields. Greyfart to Cryos. What's your status? The destruction of the battle moon has created a panic. Our fleet is scattered. But why did the beast attack us from halfway across the system? Quite simply, to show that it can. Cryos, Pyrus, assess the damage to your ships. Then get back to me. Greyfart out. The only one who's actually faced the Beast Planet is Tekla. We sure could use her help. If only we knew where she was now. Go back immediately. That is an order. Since when do you order me? I am a princess too, remember? Besides, I know my way around down here and you don't. Well, are you coming? We haven't a moment to lose. Why? What has happened? really bad before I left, but Planet Rock's battle moons arrived in time to help blow up Remora. Then we won? Well, not exactly. The beast planet emerged from the sun right after that and destroyed one of the battle moons. Tekla, are you well? Then what Vox sense was true. It is already here, Ozera. We have so little time. Come, we must hurry. We have lost nearly half of the Alliance fleets in the battle against Remora. So, what now? If we could just contact Femur. Oh, get him. When things got rough, he ran. Oh, if I could get my hands on that worthless toad. That's not important. If Femur thinks Planet Bone can stand against the beast on its own, he's got a hard lesson coming. <laughs> my ears are burning. Oh, tut, tut. Please, your imperiousness. You're needlessly distraught. Uh, keep trying to get through the lamprey, will you, pelvis? We gotta make a deal of that giant planet much is gonna be kicking us out of its teeth! Very well. But, sire, there is a more... Oh, urgent matter for you to discuss. More urgent than being doomed? What's that? Well, your bone warriors are most unhappy that you ordered them to flee the battle. And they are, after all, ferocious fighters, not cowards like... Well... Huh? Go ahead, finish that sentence! <clears throat> At any rate, they feel dishonored, your voluminousness. And you do know what that means. <clears throat> B -b -b nobody's done a better job than me as Emperor. <laughs> you don't think they'd really... Oh, I'm sure everything will be just fine. Now, why don't you just sit your little self down and relax? Relax? Who can relax at a time like this? Robin Hood go back in time to Sherwood Forest, the guys with the groovy haircuts, the great dance music, the teleporting, all-you-can-eat greasy pheasant meat. She really loves all of that stuff, but really she just can't get enough of the king's corny jokes. But smell isn't everything! <laughs> It's 
not that funny. Back to Sherwood tonight at 8.30. Wheels Viper Strike. I am the Viper and I'm ready to strike. You never know when I'm gonna fight. Racing on my track, you can try to slip by. I'll eat you up the next time you try. I am the Viper, Viper Strike starter set. It's you and me going one on one. Yeah, you got a chance, slim to none. Viper Strike starter set. I am the Viper. Hot Wheels lead the way. New Hot Wheels Viper Strike set. You control the Viper. Extra car and batteries each sold separately. It's Makeover Madness. Here's the old Optimus, and here's the new Optimus for a new millennium. Fresh, fun, and fabulous. Of course. Now, Black Arachne, as shown here in Beasties, wanted a bold new look that screams success. Isn't she stunning? She deserves it. Everyone's favorite bad guy, Megatron, always the eagle maniac, went bigger and badder. Please, everyone knows not to wear stainless steel after Labor Day. Beast Machines, Wednesdays at 7. Leave it away on my TV. This is your brain. And this is heroin. This is what happens to your brain after snorting heroin. And this is what your body goes through. Wait, it's not over yet. This is what your family goes through. Your friends and mine! And your job and your back to the future! And your life. Any questions? Tessa, you never answered my question about what we are looking for. That is because I do not know what I am looking for. But if you don't know what you're looking for... I simply learned things from Lamprey while we shared my mind. There is a secret hidden in this planet. I must discover it, no matter what the cost. Bottom of Chasm is beyond this unit's local sensor range. Then we best not find out how deep it is the hard way. I'm the lightest. I'll go first. No, wait! Zera! Anyway. Ah, oh, no good. This is the only path. Stand back! <sighs> Thank you, Princess. I am in your debt. Imagining things? Oh dear. Oh dear? This time, 
We are the endangered species. The wild ice fleas, run! to ice fleet. Regroup inside the orbit of our homeworld and await further orders. Iris, bring your fleet along as well. We're moving the battlements to a position between ice and rock. Atreus, the enemy has sent an overwhelming force against us. Planet Fire is in mortal danger. We cannot stand alone. Your world needs its leader, and it needs you now! Graveheart, we have to do something to protect my world! Then we'll need the battle moons to... No! They move too slowly. I can't wait. I am ruler of Planet Fire, and I have to think first of my home world. Firefleet, follow me! Pyrus, no! Pyrus! In truth. As a fellow monarch, I cannot blame him. But do we let him stand alone? Of course not. Let's just hope Planet Fire can hang on until we get there. Beyond the darkness lies a journey that will test your courage and consume your world. Diablo 2. Evil has survived. Rated M for Mature. Play it now on PC and Macintosh. The evil has landed. You a major containment breach! Oh my god. And it's spreading like a plague. Gary Sinise, what did you people do? Rob Lowe, Molly Ringwald, and Laura San Giacomo. Stephen King's demonic masterpiece. We are dead, and this is hell. The Stand concludes tonight at 9 Eastern and Pacific on Sci-Fi. I don't smell him. I'm the only cat left. You know... That Misty always was a prima donna. And Mr. Boots, always mm -hmm. cuddling with the humans. What a sellout. Mm. What? Mm. It's all mine. You'd never know there were three cats in here. Three? This tidy cat really controls the odor. Uh-oh. Formulated for multiple cats? Something stinks. And it's not the litter box. Uh -huh. <laughs> tidy cats. Multiple strength. For multiple cats. This Christmas, only one movie will get your adrenaline pumping and keep you on the edge of your seat. Wes Craven presents Dracula 2000. Rated R. Everywhere Friday. My nihilistic phases of sci-fi explode my cells. When I bite into your peppermint patty, my tongue tingles, my teeth chatter, my throat is cooled by the rapid chill of snow cascading York Peppermint Patty. Get the sensation. Pizza Hut has put cheese inside the very crust itself. The Insider Pizza. Just $9.99. More cheese on the inside and now more toppings on the outside. For two bucks more, you can get the Insider any way you want it, including Meat Lovers and Supreme. The Insider Pizza from Pizza Hut. Now, now.
have a nice cannoli or extravagance. Yeah, who can eat at a time like this? the last of them. But I do hope we are getting close to whatever it is. Yes. The readings are very strong now. We're almost there. This is it. But there's nothing here. Somebody's idea of a joke. I cannot have come all this way for nothing. There must be something here. Do you think this odd design might tell us something? You mean it's not a design you've seen before, Zira? Zira? Zira! Where are you? Crown. That's pure null energy. All ships, pull back. Defensive positions. Jade. I'm on it, but I don't think we can outrun it. I don't know what just happened, but was that cool or what? It appears we were just teleported. But how? And where are we? I don't know. But it would help to find the light switch. Incredible. Focus all shields at the projected point of impact. Now! Null energy is now on course for planet ice. The instant it touches any part of my homeworld, both will be destroyed. 
All ships, take that spear out, now! Braveheart, break off the attack. We are only feeding it more energy. I fear there is nothing we can do. My world, my daughter, are lost. Controls for some sort of machine. But what? Uh, a really fancy video arcade? Configuration does not match any known technology. Warning. Warning. Impact imminent. Impact? With what? Contact with null energy will result in total planetary destruction. We have to do something! Recommend maximum thrust until planet has achieved clearance. Maximum thrust of what? World engine. World engine? Are you serious? Yes. Maximum thrust now! Activating pre-flight systems. Activating atmospheric integrity shield. Look! Planet Ice! It's... it's moving! By the glacier... how... Tekla! Wait until Father sees this! Learn how this miracle was performed, my friend. I'm with you on that one. We're setting course for ice. Top speed. Who knows? With all this power beside us, we might actually stand a chance. Ha, 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 ha!